guys and welcome back to my youtube channel and today i just wanted to talk a little bit about anime and tell you my story of how i got into anime and uh, what anime is as well as what some of the misconceptions about anime are so personally for me i was never really into anime growing up not in primary school or high school uh, but then I reached university when I was 17 and someone told me about, someone had given me the, uh, some anime, like I just met someone in university. Uh, at that time I only had a 4GB flash, uh, so they gave me some anime to watch. Uh, before that I was just into American cartoons, so things like Adventure Time, things like Ben 10, Things like Avatar, The Last Airbender, things like Batman, Brave and the Bold, or Young Justice. That's what I was into. But I'd never really uh, been into anime that much. But anyway, there I was in uni, and basically I met someone who was watching something on his laptop in the cafeteria. And I just asked them, what are you watching? Then they're like, oh, it's anime. I'm like, oh, what's it about? And then I think he told me, then I asked him if he could give me some episodes. So he gave me, like, my flash disk was pretty small, like 4 GB. So he, he gave me, like, one episode each of, like, 10 or 5 different anime. Uh, because I think the anime was about, one episode was about 400 MB. So I checked it out, and it seemed pretty interesting. Uh, I, I didn't like most of them, but two of them I did like. One was called Brave 10. And the other one was called Blood Lad. I know for an introduction to anime, like if, if someone is getting into anime, uh, that's a pretty unique starting point. Before that, however, when I was really young, when I was in class eight, so I was about 12 years old, my friend gave me this Bleach DVD. You know, these are the days for burning DVDs. So he just gave me this Bleach DVD, which was like from episode 112 to 124 and it was subbed so that means it had subtitles because it was originally in japanese and i think that's why i got put off by anime because i was like one i can't understand what they're saying two i just found bleach to be a very depressing anime so yeah i ended up uh, not watching not liking bleach and that sort of put me off from anime but then in university, I heard about, uh, I got to see Blood Lad, Brave 10. Eventually, I heard about Death Note and Attack on Titan. And that was it for me. I completely fell in love with anime. I heard about Death Note first. I know, I think I heard about Attack on Titan first and then Death Note. Right. And I completely fell in love with anime at 17. I'm now like 26. So completely fell in love with anime and I really loved it and the funny thing with anime it doesn't take a long time to get into anime right in fact starting with some of the misconceptions about anime the first one being that all anime is a hundred episodes right because the most popular anime that you'll hear about is normally Bleach, Naruto and One Piece right and those are all anime with like hundreds of episodes maybe even 300 or 200 or 500 episodes and i used to think all anime was like that but the reality is that most anime is actually 12 to 24 episodes about 90 percent right 90 percent of anime is actually 12 to 24 episodes in fact i felt conned because with some anime i really did enjoy it However, it was only 12 episodes. I was like, wow, this is only 12 episodes. Why can't they make more? Right? So if you want to get anime, it's really good because in my opinion, there are about uh, 40, 30 to 40 really good must-watch anime that will make you an expert on anime. You know, even watching 20 of them, you can have a decent conversation with people about anime. But my all-time favorite anime, after watching anime for about nine years, is that there's only 40 anime. 
So if we do the maths, an episode is only 20 minutes, right? So one hour of watching anime is basically three episodes, okay? So in four to eight hours, right? In four to eight hours, you can finish a whole anime. So I'm pretty sure within like one to three months, you could finish around 40 anime. I had done the math earlier. So I think uh, that's what it equates to. Because basically, if you look at it this way, if let's say you just watch an hour a day on average of anime, uh, let's say eight hours a week, right? Let's just say eight hours a week. So that means you're finishing one anime uh, every one anime every week, right? So in forty weeks, uh, you'll probably have finished all of the anime, and it's probably half the time. So twenty weeks, because half of the anime you'd finish in four hours, right? Uh, so 20 weeks is how many months? Mm, I think that's about four months, about four to five months. But, uh, for example, I'm someone that likes to binge watch on the weekend, right? If you get really into anime. So basically six months is more than enough time to finish 40 really amazing anime, like really, really amazing anime. Uh, I remember there was a time I was watching Fringe, the series. So Fringe, it basically has five seasons, and each ep- and uh, each each season has twenty one episodes, and each episode is an hour long. <laughs> so that's a hell of a lot longer. Like the time it takes you to finish Fringe right because if you do the maths that's uh, five times eight that's 40 hours times 20 uh 40 hours times 20 that's 800 it takes 800 hours to finish fringe you get what i mean if if my maths is correct sorry it takes it takes a uh, hundred and five hours, not eight hundred hours, to finish Fringe. So, in the time it takes you to finish Fringe, you could probably finish a lot of anime. In that time, you could probably finish ten to twenty. So let's say fifteen anime, right? Yes. Yeah, so one or five hours in in that time, you could finish. 13 to 26 anime uh, depending on whether it's a 12 episode or 24 episode anime so just think one series and you can pretty much finish half of all the good anime out there in my opinion so if you finished two series in your life then that's equivalent to finishing all the good anime in my opinion so don't be intimidated by the amount of anime out there because most of it is very short. Yes, there are still a few animes that have many episodes, but as I said, 90% of anime is 12 to 24 episodes, so it doesn't take that long to finish. Uh, the next mi- misconception I'd like to tackle is that most anime is like Bleach. So Bleach is basically a shonen. And there are two types of anime. There's mainly seinen and shonen. So shonen is just mindless action over hundreds of episodes. It has these crazy fights that uh, destroy half the city and last three days. That's mainly shonen. And I think most people who don't like anime, it's because all they've ever heard of is shonen. However, there's also seinen. So shonen is mainly geared towards younger audiences, so like teenagers. But seinen is geared more towards 
uh, adults, young adults. Because you see in Japan, the way we watch series in the rest of the world is the way they watch anime. So anime is for everyone, right? So even adults that watch cartoons and the main thing they watch, yes, they still watch shonen, but they also like seinen. So seinen tends to be more realistic and more complex in terms of the plot, the depth, the character development. It's more psychologically thrilling. You have adult themes such as death, rape, murder, drugs, alcohol. So very complex storylines with lots of plot twists. The same level of depth and complexity you'd find in um, a regular TV show that has a lot of plot twists in it. Uh, Lots and lots of delicious plot twists. So... Some examples of seinen include Death Note, Attack on Titan, Future Diaries, Black Lagoon, and Samurai Champlo. The shonen, as I said, it's Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, Demon Slayer. So growing up in my 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 time, uh, back in my day, it was Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece that were the holy grail of anime. As I said, someone even gave me a Bleach DVD and I didn't like it. And I used, also used to hear, uh, hear that they liked Naruto, but I didn't like Naruto. So just to give you an example, uh, Future Diaries, the concept in Future Diaries is that the god of time, Deus, is dying and he needs to appoint a successor. So he gives, I think, is it eight, either eight or 11 individuals a diary that can predict the future and most of the time the diary is in the shape of a phone and it allows them to predict the future so it's a sort of survival game where the last person standing is going to become the new god of time so for example one person's diary predicts what happens like every the next five minutes Uh, this girl that has a crush on him her diary predicts what will happen to him right And then uh, this other girl is a terrorist, so her diary predicts the best escape route. She's a criminal, so her diary predicts the best escape route to evade the police. And there's a police officer who, who now his diary predicts the best way to catch the criminal. It'll say, like, the criminal is going this way, turn left. So you can see that sort of tug of war and that competition and that complexity that happens where... It's sort of these mind games going on where one diary shows you where the perpetrator is, the other diary shows you the best escape route, and the question is who's going to win, who's going to manage to escape and survive, and how do these other diary users interact with each other. So Future Diary is plot-wise one of the best anime out there, not my number one, but just in terms of explaining the plot in a way that you can understand and sounds interesting i find it very good so moving on uh again people say most anime is like bleach uh, but actually most of it is mecha and future and cyberpunk anime you know japan loves thinking about the future so these anime where they have giant robots that they pilot that is actually 90 percent of anime like if you have a website where you view anime and you're to just click the anime at random a lot of the anime would just be future mecha anime so anime uh that's basically they say that oh 600 years in the future ten thousand years in the future five thousand years in the future uh that happens a lot so yes if you dislike anime due to your first impressions it's probably because you're introduced to shonen. Uh, if you want to check out anime that's actually good, I highly recommend seeing an anime. And that was also point number three that uh, people think anime is unrealistic due to fight scenes and simplistic plot and lack of depth and lack of complexity. Yeah, that's mainly uh, shonen. And they also think the dub is terrible. So... Anime mainly comes in either raw, dubbed, or subbed. So raw anime is just in pure Japanese, no subtitles. Dubbed anime is where English voice actors talk over the Japanese characters. Like they remove the Japanese sound and put, you know, dubbed is. And subbed is just subtitles. So dubbed for shonen anime 
is the one that's crap because it's geared towards kids so as long as the kid can understand the voice the voice doesn't have to sound good but the dub in uh seinen is actually amazing so for example black butler uh the accent it's about some butler some demonic butler in like i don't know the 18 or 1700s he has the best british accent i have ever heard uh on screen like even compared to live action right so dub for seinen is actually good and the fifth misconception is that anime is only for boys which leads me to now talk about the different categories of anime and as i said in japan they watch anime the way we watch uh, television so there's literally genres for everything anything you'd want to watch is actually there in anime there's probably an anime about it so for example uh jose anime so jose anime is geared towards all the women such as michiko and hachkin uh jose the say is for seinen that that's a way to remember it so older women and shoujo shonen so for younger women so most women complain uh when they watch okay well mainly when they watch american cartoons they say that they're very male focused and for example with superheroes it's a very male dominated fantasy and all of that but for women anime would actually be good because these two categories you can actually watch anime get to you get towards the woman from the woman's perspective you know romance from the woman's perspective uh work and education and from the woman's perspective uh so anime is actually more gender friendly uh than western cartoons for example and then there's military anime like yomon guard where you have a lot of fight scenes involving guns uh you know people just think that oh anime is this unrealistic super powered <laughs> stuff and fight scenes going on but no as i said you have seinen which is more realistic and you have a military anime like yomon guard you also have animes that are focused on guns in general like cowboy bebop and black lagoon cowboy bebop is sort of a space opera kind of thing where there's it has a lot of gun fights it doesn't have anything supernatural going on it's just again in the future because i said most anime is based in the future and it's mainly just gun fights a lot of gun fights and i think a lot of physical fights as well so same with black lagoon again a lot of gun fights nothing supernatural going on just gun fights uh then for swords you have bleach now bleach is the same in a uh, shonen anime so it has a lot of unrealistic fighting and huge fight scenes but some people are into that i'm not shitting on them it's it's still enjoyable for some people but you also have samurai champlo samurai champlo is more like actual samurai is fighting with swords and no superpowers at all you have ninja anime ninja anime like naruto naruto is a fan favorite for most people like here in Kenya when i've gone to anime conventions half the people either dress like demon slayer or naruto and maybe like a small percentage of people are dressed like other people so naruto is a uh, shonen very popular but brave ten is also good i think it's it's more realistic than naruto so i like it uh, you can have anime on vampires like vampire hunter d i think it's a bit old slice of life so slice of life anime is pretty much what it sounds like it's just people living an ordinary life right so just going to school or going to work and living an ordinary life you know it's just chilled out anime for when you want to relax and don't want anything too crazy i haven't watched that many slice of life animes but i hear orange is really good i've seen the visuals the visuals are really amazing uh, for comedy you have gintama uh people like gintama again i'm not that into comedy but if you are to look at best comedy anime you just do a quick google search you will find a top 10 or top 20 list a uh, romance anime yeah romance anime is pretty popular and i think there is one of the drawbacks in anime which i'll get to later but romance anime is popular uh you have supernatural anime 
So just in general, werewolves, vampires, ghosts, and ghouls. Uh, Tokyo Ghoul is amazing. It's a really amazing anime. It's about like these ghouls that can eat. I think they need to either eat people or drink their blood. I think it's one of the two. Probably the drinking of maybe both. Uh, these ghouls and they live in well Tokyo and it's amazing Tokyo Ghoul is amazing well the pro- protagonist is a bit of a better male but other than that it's a pretty amazing anime uh, psychological thrillers like uh, like as I said Future Dies but also Dead Man Wonderland is about this prison there's a prison where prisoners are forced to fight And some of them have the ability to bend their blood in different ways to form weapons. So if you've seen blood bending in Avatar, that's how it is in Dead Man Wonderland. Uh, It's really cool because it's it's such a limiting power. It's like, yeah, you can bend your blood, but you don't use too much of your blood. Otherwise, you know, you're going to pass out and die. So really cool. And then mecha anime with the robots. You have Code Gears. It's about, it's also interesting. Code Gears is about many, it has many complex themes, as I said. Like it also has the theme of uh, colonization and terrorism, which you don't see covered much in other series. So basically, in Code Gears, uh, the Britannic empires conquered the rest of the world, and Japan is just like a precinct, but there's someone called Lelouch who wants to stage a rebellion and defeat the king. So he's always gotten, he's always hated Britannia, uh, but he has never had the means to defeat Britannia. So one day he gets this power called the Gears, where if it's like mind control, but it's not that simplistic. Let me explain the complexity of the plot. So basically, when he looks into your eye, he can issue you one command, like one mental command, and you'll do it. But that's what makes it interesting. He can only do it once. So basically, you have the power of mind control, but you can only do it once, just once, and it, and, and you can't do it again. So it's more complex than, for example, Professor X or any of the other telepaths which you've seen in the superhero genre, where he has to be extremely strategic with the, how... He uses it, and I think he even used it on himself once, and that was it. But the way he used it was really spectacular. So uh, it has, anime does have more complexity to it than a lot of other shows, even live-action superhero shows like The Boys and stuff. It it has a lot of complexity because he has to be very, very strategic. Like he's trying to take down an entire empire, but on the flip side, he's also a selfish, selfish bastard. So... Uh, that's a drawback and then detective anime you actually have moriarty the patriot Uh, so it's uh, you know sherlock holmes but this one follows moriarty and then just a few other terms in anime like yandere so yandere or is it yandere or yandere i think it's a woman who is basically appears to be a nice person at first but turns out to be completely psycho there's one in dead man wonderland there's one in future diaries Uh, sundere is the opposite someone who's a rough person but turns out being a good guy otaku is what people call themselves i think it started off as a derogatory term in japan but you know people sort of reclaimed the name for themselves so now people call themselves otaku and then waifu it's just the fandom like women who they find attractive within the anime they say that's my waifu like you know if she was real that's who they would want to marry so that's just some of the terminology used in the anime community and finally uh the drawbacks of anime so so the three drawbacks I notice when it comes to anime is the lack of drugs, the lack of sex, and the fact that everyone is in high school. And it gets annoying. Like the more you watch anime, the more annoying it gets. So the lack of drugs, I mean, that's not such a big deal. But it's it's contrasted so starkly when you watch a Netflix th- series and everyone's doing heroin or everyone's doing cocaine, (laughs) or everyone's doing meth, you know, like hard drugs, or even just weed, you know, just plain old simple weed. 
So for example, a tame show like Sherlock Holmes Elementary, right? That's a detective show. It's not just some crazy comedy show where guys do a lot of drugs, but in Sherlock Holmes, he's basically a recovering heroin addict and there are other people in elementary and there are other people who also do heroin in the show or also do other drugs and overdose on them, right? But in in anime, you rarely see drugs. I think that's just a reflection of the country in general where drugs are rarely seen and normally when drugs are seen in anime it's usually made up drugs so a drug that's completely made up that doesn't exist in real life like in Lupin the Third there's a drug called Dizzy Dizzy uh, which was probably a metaphor for some kind of ecstasy or LSD or cocaine wrapped up all in one so the lack of drugs sort of makes it unrealistic. But to me, the biggest gripe with anime is the lack of sex. Because there's this genre called hentai, which is just, yes, it's raw sex. It's it's porn, basically. It's porn with a storyline. Like, sometimes when people search for hentai, they basically find just compilations of the porn itself without the story. But there are like, actually a lot of series out there that there are legitimate series with a lot of porn so like a 12 or 24 episode series uh with a plot line and characters and yes there's a lot of sex a lot of lot of sex more sex than you'd see on netflix so the problem i have with anime is that there's no in between it's either you watch a regular anime where all you get is hand holding or extreme porn where you know there's nothing else to the story apart from the porn Except for Redo of Gila, that's a very amazing anime. Redo of Gila is sort of the in-between where it actually has porn, but it's a good story, uh, except there's no penetration. But yeah, it actually has a good story. But the lack of sex is pretty, it's the most disturbing trope in anime that there is. It's pretty, pretty annoying and it gets boring where it's a trope where characters, whenever they're in a situation with women, like they see a woman in her underwear or a woman accidentally falls on them, they suddenly get nosebleeds because of shyness and they run away screaming. It's very annoying and it's sort of, the annoyance just grows on you over time because you feel like, eh, they're never going to get rid of this trope. So it's pretty pissing off. Uh... And the fact that they're all in high school, that is also annoying. That's why I sort of see, I think anime gets a lot of shit that it doesn't deserve. Because people, as I said, they're mostly criticizing uh, shonen when they say that there's no depth, there's no complexity, everything is completely unrealistic. I think it gets a lot of shit. Uh, but the one area where it doesn't get shit is the fact that the, there's a lack of sex and everyone is in high school so it's kind of annoying like for me I think up until I was 21 yeah I could relate to anime but it's kind of annoying when you're 26 and you're trying to relate to a 16 year old because you're like dude that was like a really long time ago you know I want to see some adults and yes there is some anime that has adults in it uh, Durarara, some of the character, like one of the characters is 21. A few of them are like 21, they're in their 20s. Uh, Bakano, you have uh, largely adult characters in Bakano, which is really good. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, yes, most of the characters, the main characters are like in their 30s in Cowboy Bebop. Black Lagoon as well, all of the characters are adults. Uh, Psychopaths, I remember one specific season of Psychopaths. All the characters were 24 and uh, what other animes there. Even Darker Than Black, the character is 21. But I think with all of these characters, none of them are in university, right? So it can be a bit boring where you've gone through the whole university experience but you have nothing to relate to. And I think that's just a big problem with media in general, because even with regular live action, all the characters are over 30. So now it's the opposite problem where 
you're watching a guy who has a wife and kids let's say you're 15 you're watching a wife a guy who has a wife and kids it's like you've not even lost your virginity yet you know you want to have sex with many people before you settle down and this guy's already married and having kids so i find both of them unrelatable that's why for live action i've never liked it i'm like why is everyone always over 30 always like i think the only series where people are not over 30 that comes to mind is the skins and um misfits and i think i think in friends they're in their 20s and and uh what other series uh i met your mother but in most series people are too old and there's no series i've seen where people are in uni right all i'd want is for more series to be out there where people are in uni whether live action or animated in fact if I was to start an animated company, then I would basically just um, I would basically just do focus on college, like focus on the sixteen to twenty five demographic, so the really young adult demographic, because no one is tackling that. No one like it's such an untapped market, and I wish more people would target it. So yeah, those are the main drawbacks and tropes of anime that can be a bit annoying. But if you're definitely someone who's under 21, then yes, I highly uh, recommend anime. And even if you're not, uh, if you're older, even if you're 30 or if you're 40, there's still some good anime out there that you'd like despite your age. So for example, Death Note and Attack on Titan and Future Diaries, uh, those are some good animes that... Even if you're an old person, you'd still enjoy. Even in Future Diaries, the the main characters are, I believe, 14, both of them. But the rest of the characters are adults. So it's relatable. So yes, anime is still good. I wouldn't pass it up. And I'm not saying it becomes irrelevant once you're like 25 or anything. It's just less enjoyable. But to me, it's still far more enjoyable than live action so finally uh here was just my list of best anime of all time i wrote this list a while ago but my cr criteria was it has to have at least 24 episodes it has to have a good dub and it has to have good visuals and of course it has to be good in general uh, so that's my a list and there's also my b list so I think for some of them, I think Future Diaries, I don't know why it's not in the A-list. It should be there. As I said, I wrote it a while ago. But I think like Elf and Laid and Erased, I think they're only 12 episodes, but they're still uh, really amazing. So as I said, uh, pretty much just 27 plus 10. So just 37 anime total, which I think are the best anime of all time. Uh, there's also anime to watch before Death Note, right? Because Death Note is really, really good and you don't want to spoil yourself before you before you first finish the other anime. Otherwise, those other anime will be boring. Uh, but yeah, some of these are like really incredible anime. I think in my opinion, the golden age of anime was 2006 till 2016. They have not produced any good anime after 2016. Uh, I guess before 2016, you, I mean 2006, you had Cowboy Bebop, which was arguably good. After 2016, I haven't seen any really good anime. I think the only good anime has actually been made by Netflix. I think Netflix has started making good anime because High Rise Invasion, Seven Seed, C.S. Manos, Great Pretender being the beginning, Those, all of those came after... 2016 but they were made by netflix so netflix actually does make good anime great pretender is really good uh it's mm, it's sort of like lupin the third except he doesn't simp for fujiko but uh <laughs> uh yeah so and oh yeah i forgot with lupin the third you have to specifically start with the woman called Fujiko Min, Mine. So there's Lupin the Third, which I think is part three, called, I think it's just called The Woman Called Fujiko Mine. 
then there's looping the third part four part five part six i think down part six now i stopped at part five but it was really good it was a really interesting series it also has a lot of uh plot twists uh, fairy tale is also amazing i'm just trying to give short reviews i'll review all of them in more in depth later but uh, fairy tale is also really amazing it's sort of like if you liked avatar the last airbender and you know that's the thing a lot of adults liked it even though it's like preteens and teenagers in that show so fairy tale is basically people who have control over elements and the wizards and it's sort of like in the middle ages and stuff there's a lot of fan service so it's pretty good it's it's the only shonen that i like uh, fairy tale so it has hundreds of episodes lots of action but i love fairy tale fairy tale is actually amazing as well as uh what else hajime no ipo it's an old anime hajime no ipo i think that's like 2001 or something but Hajime no Ipo is a sports anime. That's what I mean. There's anime about everything, even sports. There's anime about racing, driving, cycling, boxing, basketball, basketball, cricket, tennis, any sport, almost every sport you will find an anime. There's even an anime about cooking. There are two shows. I think there's Bento Box. I think it's just called Bento and there's another one. There's a really popular one about cooking. Just search cooking anime and you'll find it where anime food looks really delicious. So you can really find almost any category of anime that you're looking for to suit anyone's needs. So yes, uh, that was just my full review of anime. Uh, yeah. <laughs>